Listen, I know this is complicated. You've come here because you have absolutely no idea where to start and that's okay. I hope I can be your guide to getting you up and running, controlling your lights on set after just watching this video. I am going to personally walk you through setting up and controlling three completely different lights. Welcome, I'm Jeff Brink, creator of Blackout Lighting Console, which is a lighting console app that I created to simplify lighting control. Because honestly, full-size consoles like the Grand MA, ETC EOS, and HOG are all too much for what we do in film 90% of the time. I invite you to try out Blackout as it will be the simplest way to get started. And if anything, a gateway to learning more. But let's first start with the basics. So you bought a few lights and you wanna control them, wired or maybe wirelessly. How do you do that? It all starts with the console. You need to get organized and it happens in the patch screen on any console. This is where you are naming your fixtures. We're going to do this manually because every console is different and there's no magic in patching fixtures. It's just more automated when you do it through a console, which I will show you using Blackout later. Conventionally, we name our lights with numbers. A simple way to approach this is by separating each fixture type by 100. So if I had 10 cream source vortexes, you could put those as channels or fixture numbers 101 through 110. Then if you had a kit of eight Astera tubes, you could name these 201 through 208. The next set of lights would be 301 through however many of that light you had. Some consoles call this number that we are giving our lights a channel and other consoles call this a fixture number. It makes more sense in our world to call them fixture numbers because we are mostly using LED fixtures. A channel is a bit outdated, but it referred to a channel that a tungsten light would be ported into in a dimmer rack, and you could mix and match those channels. In any case, this number that we are labeling the light is its name. So when a DP, gaffer, or electrician want to refer to this light, you call it by its name. Hey, can you take fixture 101 to 10%? Sure, everyone will know what light you are talking about. So I am going to label my sky panel 101, my Titan tube 201, and my Felix P3 301. If anything, at least label it with some tape, if not a nice printed label. You normally put this on the back of the light but in this case, just so that we can refer to it easily, I'm going to put it right here on the front of the light. Now that we have given these lights a name, they need to be addressed so that we can talk to them individually with our lighting console. Now, you've probably heard of DMX because most lights have a DMX port on them. This is a five pin XLR cable that you can send the lighting protocol called DMX through. You can go directly from a lot of consoles to a fixture, and then you can daisy chain up to 32 fixtures on one run or go 300 meters, which is about a thousand feet. But we hardly ever do that because obviously it's limiting if you ever wanted to move one of the lights in the middle of your daisy chain. So we use an opto splitter which regenerates the DMX signal and allows us to branch out. Now we are more free to move about our lights. Each run of DMX holds 512 slots, which are mostly referred to as channels, not to be confused with consoles like ETC EOS that use channel instead of fixture number for the names of their lights. Now, just a clarification, an opto splitter isn't going to give you more channels or slots. It simply regenerates the same signal so that you can restart your thousand foot run and go another thousand feet or 32 more devices. You have DMX that goes in and there are outputs here that regenerate the signal. Each slot or channel is simply a range from zero to 255, which is eight bits of information. If you have a 96 channel dimmer rack or a Rat Pack dimmer box on your stage, each of those ports is one channel. 
you can stick a tungsten light into one of those circuits and control the light's intensity. 255 would turn the light on at full and zero would turn the light off. For convenience sake, we usually just put these in terms of percentages, so from zero to 100%. With LEDs, you don't dim the circuit that it's plugged into because that would ruin the electronics. The dimmer is in the light, so you plug LEDs directly into the wall or hard power. But you have more parameters to control. The intensity is one, but you can control the color temperature, tint, red, green, and blue values of the light, and sometimes a whole lot more. Each one of those parameters takes up one slot or channel of DMX, and this is determined by the specific mode that you put the light in. So this is where you need to start looking at your lights manual to figure out what mode you wanna put it in. I have a whole video on how to choose the right profile for your light. I will link to here and in the description below. So check it out. This sky panel, we will put in mode six, which is probably the most commonly used mode for sky panels on film sets. In this mode, it takes up 20 channels of my 512 channels available from my DMX line. So although I have named this fixture 101, I'm going to start the address at one. This is what I will add to my label so that if anything gets messed up, people know what address it's supposed to be at. Now my next light, I have to start 20 slots further ahead. So this would be address 21. So my Titan tube, even though it's fixture 201, its address is 21. I love playing my Asteras in mode 89, which only takes up seven channels. So my next fixture can start at address 28. So I will put my Felix P3, I've labeled fixture 301 at address 28. I personally like mode 12 for Felix fixtures. In this mode, it takes up 16 channels. So the next available address for any other fixtures I will add will be 44. You wanna squish these together because as you add more lights, it's going to take up more and more space. And if you separate them, then you might not be able to fit everything in easily. But Jeff, I've been on movie sets that have hundreds of lights all controlled through one board. How do they do that with only 512 channels available? The answer is ethernet. If your console doesn't have a DMX output port like Blackout where the console is literally on an iPad or you can't fit all of your lights into 512 DMX channels, then you need to run Ethernet, which allows you to run multiple lines of DMX through one cable so that each line has 512 new channels available for more lights. Each of these lines is a completely different run of DMX called a universe. This is another way that you can separate fixtures or stages or sets. As you can see, lighting control is all about organization. Now, obviously you have to convert from ethernet to DMX and that is where a DMX gateway comes in. Ethernet goes into this box and DMX comes out. Some gateways like this Obsidian EN4 have multiple DMX ports. This is not like an opto splitter, which splits the DMX signal from one line to multiple. Each one of these ports can be a different universe sending a whole other 512 channels of information down it. Now what that ethernet signal is sending to this box is a different protocol, obviously because it can carry multiple runs of universes of DMX. In general, it's going to be one of two major protocols, ArtNet or SACN. If you want to know more about these, I highly recommend watching my Network Basics playlist, which I will link to here or in the description below. For the short answer, these protocols can carry thousands of universes on one single Ethernet cable. And once you're in Ethernet world, you can use everything we use with computers, Wi-Fi hotspots, access points, switches, Ethernet routers, all from the IT industry to route this traffic throughout a stage. So instead of having to run four lines of DMX, each a different universe to a single stage, you can now just route one cable, your ethernet cable to each stage, and then put a DMX gateway at the end of it and choose what universes of the thousands that are traveling through this one ethernet cable that you need at that particular stage for those lights. Now, why is this so complicated? 
Because once you are in Ethernet world, you need to be familiar with basic networking and IP addresses in order to get all of these devices to talk together. Now, if you know nothing about networking, I highly recommend checking out my video in the description below on networking basics because there's honestly a lot to it. But I'm going to give you the quick start guide to getting up and running. So there's going to be obviously some glossing over details here. Okay, so now we need to physically connect our DMX gateway with our iPad. And we're gonna do this with ethernet. Obviously the iPad does not have an ethernet port on it. So you need to get a USB-C to ethernet dongle. We will go ahead and plug the dongle into the USB-C port on your iPad and then plug the ethernet cable into the dongle and into your gateway. Now your gateway is physically connected to your iPad. If you're going directly from your console to a DMX gateway or light on your console or iPad, set your IP address to 192.168.0. Dot 101. You should set this manually, then go to your DMX gateway and set this IP address to 192.168.0.201. Easy numbers to remember. 101 is your console, 201 is your gateway. Both subnet masks should be set to 255.255.255.0. You can leave this gateway field blank, but if you need to type in something, you should type in 192. .168.0.1. Now your iPad and DMX gateway are in the same IP range. That means they have the first three octets the same and the last one is different because that is their specific address or name like we named the lights earlier. If you need to add more gateways, just keep numbering up 202, 203, 204. Now your devices should be able to talk to each other, but they need to be configured to talk the same protocol. Because remember, we could be sending ARTNET or SACN, which are two different protocols. In your console, choose which protocol you want to use. But watch out because some devices only do ARTNET and some only do SACN. This gateway can do both, so I need to set it in the menu. Each gateway is going to be a little different to set up, but just walk through the menu or read it in the manual. Here, I will go through each port and set the protocol because this gateway is fancy and I could send different protocols to different ports. Just go with the easiest workflow to get started. And as you get more into this, you can branch out and configure more. So we are going to set all of these to SACN. Then in blackout, we set this output protocol to SACN. This priority field, you should never need to touch. Seriously, I've only ever touched it a few times when I'm bringing a console into a theater that already has a console. And instead of configuring out some merge between the consoles, I just set this to a higher priority and take over. Regardless, don't touch this. If your device only does ARTNET, like this Exilux Connect Plus, then make sure that that universe offset is set the same in both devices. This is super important because if you are familiar at all with a zero based counting system, computers love to count from zero instead of one. So this universe number here is where you can offset that count. In general, you wanna put this to zero everywhere. Again, this is just where you are determining the count from, but once you set this, forget about it because everything else in the console will start at one and make sense. So here in my Exilux, I set this universe to zero. In Blackout, I will also set this universe offset to zero. Now here's the tricky thing with Artnet. It can broadcast everywhere or it can unicast to a specific device. In general, with ARTNET, you wanna broadcast the signal because if you have multiple gateways, you want the information to reach everyone. If you have just one device you are talking to directly from the iPad, then you can unicast specifically to that IP of the DMX gateway. But in general, you wanna put this to directed broadcast. If you try this and you can't control your lights, then switch this to limited broadcast. You need to put this to limited broadcast or unicast to the specific IP with this Exilux Connect Plus. Okay, so now that your DMX gateway and your console are in the same IP range and talking the same protocol, let's now connect our lights. As this will be more of how you see lights connected on set, I will go from the gateway to my opto splitter with this DMX cable. 
I now have my opto splitter connected to my gateway through port one, which is outputting universe one from the SACN data that we are getting from our console. I can then connect my lights to my opto splitter. I can directly connect the sky panel and the P3 color, but for the Titan tube, I would need to use their Astera power box that comes in a kit of Asteras and then those special cables that connect into this port on the Titan tube. But most people are using this wirelessly. There are numerous videos out there to show you how to use Astera's app to configure their lights using an Art7 box, but I'm just gonna show you how to do this manually through the Titan tube menu. I've already set my DMX address and mode. Now I need to make sure that the input is set to CRMX so that it's ready to receive a wireless signal. I am also going to unpair just in case this is paired to any other transmitter. Now I go to my transmitter, which could be any CRMX transmitter, such as the Art7 box, a Rat Pack AKS, or even a Moonlight in transmit mode. If you are using the Art7 box, you need to use this adapter so that you can input DMX into this device and it will now transmit that data wirelessly. You can see that the Art7 switches to transmitter mode with this dongle plugged in. I will now press the pair button on the transmitter. This sends a signal to any receivers that are unpaired and links them. Now my Astera is linked to this Art7 box. Once I plug this into the opto splitter, all of my lights should now be getting data. Now all of my lights are getting data from this opto splitter, which is getting data from universe one from this gateway, which is getting SACN data from my console. Now we get to patching our lights. We already know the name of our fixtures and what addresses they should be at. So this should be super easy now in our console. In blackout, I will go to the patch screen, click unpatch to start fresh, click add fixtures, add from fixture database, navigate to our manufacturer ARI, sky panel, look for mode six, which is 20 addresses and click patch. I'm going to put the fixture ID to 101. It's starting at address one in universe one and I'm going to give it a nice airy blue color. I'll press save. I will now add my Astera tube. I'll add fixtures, add from fixture database, search for Titan tube, go to Astera Titan tube and look for mode 89. Click patch and you can see Blackout automatically figures out the next available address, which is 21, which is what we have set here. I'm going to put the fixture ID to 201, give this a nice purple Astera color. And now if I wanted to patch in eight of these with a whole kit, I can just set the amount to eight. And now you can see that Blackout automatically figures out both the fixture number and address of each unit sequentially. Pretty cool, right? This is what I meant when I said earlier that patching is more automated in a console because it can do things for you quicker, but there's no magic in what this is doing. So I just have one fixture, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this amount down to one and click save. I will now add my P3 color. Add from fixture database, search P3. It's Felix fixture, color series. We're gonna go to mode 12, press patch put the fixture ID to 301 and give this a nice red color. Click save. And now all three of my lights are patched. If you go into fixture view, you can select all three of your lights, go to fixture controls, which shows you any parameter that you can adjust on your lights. And now I can go ahead and dim up the lights, change their color temperature, crossfade them into a color. Voila. You're good to go. From here, I have numerous tutorials on how to work Blackout. So I recommend going through my channel and starting there. But wait, you said we could control our lights wirelessly. How do we do that? From here, it's just replacing DMX cables with transmitters and receivers. We've already learned how to talk to Astera tubes wirelessly using a transmitter because it has a built-in receiver. 
For lights that don't have CRMX built in, you need to get an external receiver, such as a Rat Pack Centena or a Cinelex Skynote. I'm simply going to replace the DMX cable from my Opto to my Sky Panel with a CRMX receiver. I grab a Sky Node. This is not battery powered, so it will need to get power from the unit. Plug in my power cable, plug in my sky node, and you can see this is flashing because it was linked to another transmitter. So I need to unlink this so that I can link this to my transmitter that I am using now. To link any receivers, make sure you first unlink them by holding the link or sync button until their lights go out. Now go to your transmitter and press the transmit button. Do not hold this button as this will unlink everything paired to this transmitter. You just press it once. Now it will find and pair to any available receivers and voila, you're in business. I'm gonna do the same thing with my Felix P3 color. I'm going to lose the DMX cable and plug in a Rat Pack Centena. I'm gonna go ahead and power this on and you can see it is also paired to another transmitter that it is looking for. So I'm going to hold the unlink button. It is now unlinked and ready to pair. And I'm going to, again, just tap my transmit button on my transmitter. These are now pairing. And once the lights go solid, I now have a link to this transmitter. And I can go ahead and plug this into my Felix P3 color. Now, all of my lights are getting wireless data from this transmitter through either receivers that we put on the lights or an internal CRMX receiver. This transmitter is getting fed data from this opto splitter, which is getting fed data from universe one, from port one on this gateway. This gateway is getting SACN data from my console. If I wanted to run another universe to a different set of lights, I would need another transmitter. I would plug this into another port on my gateway, set this port to whatever universe I needed, and then I would link other receivers to this transmitter. Now, before you get confused at which receivers are linked to what transmitters, label them at least with a color, if not a clear universe number. Now, how do you go wireless from the iPad to your gateway? All you need is a Wi-Fi router or access point. You connect this to your gateway and then you connect your iPad or console to the Wi-Fi that the router is creating. If you get a Wi-Fi router, this will actually automatically configure IPs for you for any device that is connected to the network, which can be nice, but it's still best to set your IPs manually, at least for your gateways, because then you know what device is at what IP and you can create a nice spreadsheet and labels in case you need to change something on the fly. If you now place these around a set, you can draw a map of what gateway is where and access each one from your computer or iPad. If they are all getting IPs assigned to them, then you might not know what IP is assigned to what gateway. That being said, you really don't need to know the address of your iPad. So we usually set this to automatic and then every time it connects to the Wi-Fi, it gets an IP address assigned to it automatically, which is convenient because it's one less thing to have to worry about. So I'm going to lose the ethernet cable from my iPad and plug it into my router. I'm going to go ahead and power my router, lose the dongle from my iPad, go into iOS settings, Wi-Fi, and connect up to the wireless network that this is creating. So now that you are on the Wi-Fi of your wireless router, it says that it doesn't have internet. That's fine because we don't need internet to run any of this. What we are creating is a local area network or LAN instead of using the World Wide Web. We simply need to network our devices together so that we can talk to them locally. No one else needs to talk to them unless you plan to run a stage remotely, which you're probably not going to need to do. So now that I'm on the router's Wi-Fi, I am wirelessly sending SACN data through the router to my gateway. This gateway is getting the SACN data, outputting on port one, universe one, which is going into my opto splitter, and out to my transmitter. My transmitter is now linked to the receivers on my lights or in my light. Congratulations, 
You have now learned to set up and configure your lights, gateways, network, and console to control lights on any production. If you want to learn more, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that I highly recommend going through. Please like, subscribe, and comment below to help me be able to make more of these videos for you. Thanks for watching.